Aware of the Democrats' repeated promises to flood the White House with subpoenas and document requests, the president had this to say about these investigations over the weekend. So now they go and morph into, let's inspect every deal he's ever done. We're going to go into his finances. We're going to check his deals. We're going to check. These people are sick. Okay, let's bring in national security attorney Bradley Moss, columnist at The Hill, Kristen Tate, and Fox News contributor, former GOP congressman and author of The Deep State, Jason Chaffetz. Great to have all of you with us. Good evening, Shannon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. And we just now have a tweet in from Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who's chair of the House Finance Committee. She says this, obstruction of justice reality show, firing Comey, sending coded messages to Manafort and others that he has the power to pardon, lying about Trump Tower meeting, threatening Cohen's in-laws, attempting to destroy Mueller. What more do we need to know? Impeachment is the only answer. Jason. Well, she started saying impeachment uh, pretty much when the president uh, uh, was elected. Uh, Mueller is still in place. The Democrats joined the Republicans. In fact, they were even more vocal about getting rid of Comey. It was Rod Rosenstein who put together uh, that memo. And what the Democrats are doing is a total and complete overreach. It has to have a congressional purpose. You're not allowed to just go fish everywhere with 80 different people and hope that you find some fact that you can grab onto. Well, and we had uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, who heads up the House Intel Committee this weekend, saying this about something that may or may not be true. We're also looking at persistent allegations that the Russians have been laundering money through the Trump organization. I don't know that that's true. Brad, okay to throw that out there if you're the chair of the House Intel and you say, I'm going to throw this out there, but I don't know if it's true. Well, look, he's not leaping to an immediate conclusion, which I think you would want to do. You don't want to immediately decide what is and is not true. But let's be real clear, because Jason put this out there. These requests, these 81 different individuals, entities, corporations, whatever, are all people and entities that have already released documents, these very same documents, to federal investigators in the Southern District of New York, to state investigators in New York, and to the Mueller team. This is based Congress, the House in particular, getting a duplicate copy mm -hmm. of everything for their own report that would encompass all of these different investigations. And remember, under DOJ policy, the president can't be indicted. So no matter what these different teams find, all they could do is write an internal report at the end. That's why the House wants the documents as well. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned all these other entities that are already looking into all of these things. The New York Times, I think it was today, uh, said basically what Democrats are doing is gathering all the same evidence. So if the Mueller report doesn't pan out, they can actually have the same evidence with a different standard of proof. It's not something that would maybe meet a criminal indictment, but they have other things they could do with it, possibly the I-word, impeachment. I want to play something that Jerry Nadler said, congressman who heads up uh, the chair of the Senate, or excuse me, House Judiciary Committee, where the impeachment would start. Here's what he said on ABC about laying the groundwork. Before you impeach somebody, you have to persuade the American public that it ought to happen. Well, it, uh, put that together with his statement where he says, we've sent these document requests in order to begin building the public record. So, Kristen, is this all about getting to impeachment? Yeah, it's very clear what's going on here. Now that very few people expect some big Russian collusion bombshell from Mueller, the Democrats are prepared to investigate Trump endlessly to find anything to remove him from office. Up until now, the Trump-Russia probe has pretty much existed behind the scenes. These new efforts will, of course, be a lot more public. It seems like there are very few limits as to who or what can actually be investigated. So this could potentially be damaging for Trump. But, Shannon, I actually think this will be more politically damaging for the Democrats because because this just reeks of a political effort by the left to remove Trump from office as vengeance for him winning in 2016. These Democrats are obsessed with removing him from office. It's basically become the identity of their party. And I have to think at some point, the constituents of these Democrats will demand something from them other than just resist Trump. It really doesn't seem like a great plan moving into 2020. I mean, there's no doubt that the base on either side is going to be pretty entrenched, whether they're with President Trump, whether they're with the resist movement. So, Jason, what happens to the middle, looking and watching and hearing these reports unfold over months and now years at a time, all the way up to the 2020 election, no doubt? Well, look, I think they're going to be very dismayed at the Democrats who've been promising since day one. You listen to Adam Schiff, he said, Schiff, he said that there was actual evidence. There isn't 
not only no evidence, you don't have even a single witness. And for Adam Schiff to continue to throw out new allegations with no evidence, no witness, no smoking gun is the most irresponsible thing you can do when you're entrusted with that gavel uh, there on the Intel Committee. He's a joke of a congressman. He is no way should be in that position. And I think the voters will ultimately take it out on the Democrats and, and take them out of, out of power. We'll see. This is what Sarah Sanders from the White House says tonight. Chairman Nadler and his fellow Democrats have embarked on a fishing expedition because they're terrified that their two-year false narrative of Russian collusion is uh, crumbling. The Democrats are not after the truth. They're after the president. Bradley, do you think that the American public may view it that way? I don't think quite yet. I think, look, the president's already an undicted co-conspirator in the Southern District of New York, tied up in a criminal conspiracy that his former personal lawyer pled guilty to. Despite what Jason just said, there are already pieces of evidence out there about criminal coordination. You had Paul Manafort, the campaign chairman, giving 75 pages of polling data to who? The Russian intelligence guy, Konstantin Kalimnik. You had Roger Stone coordinating what he at least believed was, was information about WikiLeaks and giving giving it to the campaign. Is there going to be the smoking gun we remember from Watergate? I don't know. I'm not in, in, in have that information any more than Jason does. But neither of us can conclude one way or the other where this will go. All right. Well, we should know at some point when the special counsel wraps up. In the meantime, we'll have plenty uh, to wade through with these Democrat investigations on the Hill. Uh, thank you all. Power panel, great to have you. Absolutely.